Moving on from this, we have an update again, courtesy of Ye, formerly known as Kanye West. He says, in case some of you were upset over there in the States, if you were eager to kind of have him on your ballot, unfortunately, unfortunately, he is not running uh, for president in 2024. Yay, 2024 is officially over, according to the Daily Beast. It says, campaign in chaos. Kanye West just wants to be left alone. <laughs> it's hilarious. He says that after terrorizing Tremaine Emery with a tremendous line, terrorizing Yoon Ambush, terrorizing Virgil's memory, or tarnishing it, um, terrorizing Diddy, terrorizing everybody, right? During that whole episode where he was going at it with everybody, bluffing Adidas CEOs, you know, standing there in a conference room, showing them porn on his phone in a sort of weird power play and just generally being a menace. Now he wants to be left alone. Now, Ye wants to be left alone. Absolutely hilarious. So, article from the Daily Beast is as follows. When Kanye and his white nationalist advisor... <laughs> Nick Fuentes, man, Jesus. Anyway, when Kanye and his white nationalist advisor, Nick Fuentes, um, dined with Donald Trump last fall, the iconic rapper and exotic um, 2020-24, um, Chris Sotic, sorry, 2020-24 presidential candidate managed to grab all the wrong kinds of headlines. But since the Mar-a-Lago summit, Kanye West now preferring to go simply by Ye hasn't managed to grab much attention at all. And the disappearing spotlight, according to people close to West's operation, is because his presidential campaign has been on hold for months and made a civil wall amongst West lieutenants and a lack of interest from Megastar himself. Wow. So he changed his mind and his advisors are fighting. The girls are fighting and Ye is over it. The girls are fighting and Ye is over it. Exactly. Sleeping uh, Buddha says, the biggest attention seeker in the world wants to be left alone. Exactly. Absolutely hilarious. This is what I love about Ye. He's full of flipping contradictions. He's full of hypocrisy and he just wears it on his jacket. I love it. It continues. As other Republican presidential hopefuls ramp up their White House bids, West's political team of far-right influencers, imagine being called a far-right influencer. It's like it's just as bad as being calling a liberal influencer. Like, horrible. Anything that involves influencers is just horrendous. Even though, you know, there is some value to it because you are kind of, you know, affecting change in some way. Far-right influencer is just horrendous title to have on you. But anyway, <coughs> has found a new foe, each other. After once working together to elect West or at least get him more attention through media appearances on fringe outlets like Infowars, West's campaign staffers like Fuentes, January 6th rally organizer Ali Alexander and bridge propagator Milo Yiannopoulos have turned on one another. Meanwhile, West has remained, um, has remained largely silent about his political future, um, appearing to focus instead on his new marriage to Bianca Sensori, a former designer at his shoe company and his private Christian school, Dunder Academy. Um, I think Milo got fired, didn't he, early on, because I think, um, what's it called, Nick Fuentes or somebody in his camp snitched to Ye that Milo may have said some not so nice things about Ye and Kim back in the day or whatnot, you know, what he does. And then he got kicked off the team. Um, which is hilarious. It continues. West's marriage, which was first reported in January, coincided with the mark dip in the rapper's interest in his campaign, according to one employee. So maybe we have Bianca Sensori to thank for Kanye dumping this fucking Yay 2024 shit or Yay 24 campaign. Because as a fan of him, that was one of the most embarrassing parts of it. The guy refuses to read a book. He refuses to think about or construct policies in any kind of way, shape or form. But then he wants to be taken seriously as a presidential candidate. Like It's a legitimate insult to people's intelligence. And I don't even live over there. I'm not even flipping American. And it flipping pissed me off. So I can only imagine people that live over there. Adam Camacho, who told the Daily Beast that Wes hired him as a documentary producer in November 2022, said the informal campaign has been a communications nightmare. In February, Camacho tried to contact West to ask if his contract working for the rapper would be extended. Camacho provided Daily Beast a copy of the November paycheck that Yeezy LSC made out to a studio company. And he said, I couldn't get a hold of him. Why is this guy contacting him? Just keep sending the invoices. What's wrong with people, man? This guy is fumbling a bag. If you're on flipping retainer or you're being hired as a flipping documentarian, just keep working behind the scenes. Keep sending the invoices. Whatever gets paid, gets paid. Whatever gets, doesn't get paid, then you know you're not working anymore. Why are you checking? Um, sorry, yay. Just checking. Do I still work for you? Sorry, yay. Hope you're well. Hopefully the wedding went well. Um, just wondering, should I come into work on Monday? It's like, come on, man. Don't be such a flipping baby. Like, shut up. Just keep sending the invoices. Get paid, brother. What are you doing? 
um, it continued. Um, eventually, Camacho did reach Ye, who Camacho claims wired him money to extend his agreement. So Ye sent him more money, but Camacho has little to do since the US campaign seems to be on high years. So this guy's upset that he's getting free money to sit around and rewatch clips that he's already filmed on Ye's documentary. Like, oh my God. Some, pe some people had the, some people just really don't take their blessings, they take the blessings for granted. Camacho recalled West telling him that he was too focused on other ventures like the Sushi Only Dunder Academy. Right now, I am living my life. I am concentrating on the school, the Dunder Academy, and my new wife and my kids. And that's it, West told Camacho, according to the filmmaker. I just want to be left alone. So this is directly words coming from Ye, courtesy of this Camacho guy. He's not focused on anything political right now. The producer continued. No person who spoke to West about his candidacy said rapid political operation is no more. His interests are focused on his children, family, and creative endeavors. He should have focused on that before, and isn't it? Maybe he could have flipping kept his family intact. In who knows? But anyway, said this person who spoke to Daily Beast of the condition of the anonymity due to their closest to the rapper. Anyone that is representing Yale in any political capacity is a charlatan. There is no political shop. So this maybe explains why Nick Fuentes has been going on podcasts, isn't it? He went on that girl, Just Pearly Something's podcast, and he's been doing his thing without Ye. So that makes... That, that really explains why Nick Fuentes, Milo and a few other people are just being, you know, on their own doing things and not flying around with Ye anymore because Ye is just with Bianca chilling. Attempts to reach West through his attorneys were unsuccessful. To the extent that it ever existed, West's campaign earned most of his headlines for the far-right influences West brought on his orbit. The group included Alexander, Yiannopoulos and Fuentes, as well as anti-Muslim activists and failed Republican Congress candidate Laura Luma. Laura Luma, maybe one of the most beautiful um, flipping Republican Congress candidates that ever existed, actually. If you're ever, if you ever in doubt, definitely Google Laura Luma. She's definitely one of the most gorgeous um, people I've ever seen in my entire life. Absolute stunner. 10 out of 10. After publication, Luma disputed that she ever was in West Orbit, though she confirmed that she had offered, he had offered her a job. I never worked for Ye's campaign. I never attempted to work for Ye's campaign. As a free speech absolutist, I don't believe anyone should be banned and deplatformed for their speech. Ye approached me and asked me to work on his campaign. I politely declined because I endorsed President Trump and I was appointed President Trump in the 2024 election efforts. Isn't Laura Luma Jewish as well? That would have been hilarious, isn't it? Ye goes on his anti Semite flipping, you know, flipping a, in a promo tour. Uh, says he loves Hitler and then Laura Luma takes a job that would really do bad for her flipping rep online I think she's Jewish I'm not too sure I think she is these members um, of Jude West's new entourage joined him in a shambolic interviews with far right um, with right wing so personalities like Alex Jones and Tim Paul they think Tim Paul's right wing now Okay, fair play. Um, to which, latter which ended with the West and the Annapolis storming out. Nearly as soon as the campaign began, however, West's operatives began to turn on each other. In December, Annapolis was fired from West's campaign, seemingly replaced by Alexander. And with West's campaign basically dormant, Alexander has little to do on the rapper's behalf. But each side of, of the accused of the other plundered um, campaign for money. See, this is what I've heard as well, by the way. I've heard through people close to Ye, all the time that he's a nightmare to deal with but he pays well and because he's so crazy and out there sometimes people get left on retainer or get left on the flipping employee books way past their actual you know use for a project and they just keep, keep getting paid and it's just coming out of his account and obviously this guy's got you know he's a flipping billionaire basically he's got so much money he doesn't really realize and I think only in the last few years he started to take more kind of control of his finances. But for a long time, he'd have people that he paid or got on board for work on certain projects and they'd still be sending through invoices. <laughs> I've heard this is a thing. So he's crazy, he's a nut, but I've heard he pays very, very well. He definitely believes in paying creatives their fair rate. He's two sides. Either you don't get paid at all or you get paid abundantly well, which is why a lot of people don't come out and say bad things about Ye because he pays everybody well. Um, and he definitely puts you on and shit. Like he doesn't, he's not really, he's not shy of sharing the limelight like other people are. Um, it continues here. It says, on his way out of the campaign, Yanapolis reportedly demanded 116,000 in payment from West, ultimately receiving roughly 50,000 in total. So he wanted 100K and he got half. Still decent lick. According to campaign finance reports, Fuentes accused Yanapolis of running up hotel bills. <laughs> of course he did. Milo looks at somebody that would run up hotel bills. 
worth tens of thousands of dollars on Fuentes' credit card during the campaign, a claim that Yanapis acknowledges, though he insists he tried to reimburse Fuentes. Oh my God. Milo was trying to get over 100,000 in payments for 10 days' work, Luma told the Daily Beast. The fact of the matter is, no one gets paid that much money in 10 days, and you know how, you know now he's back to the, he trashes everybody, basically doesn't want to work with him. So yeah, so it basically shows that this grift, that these guys are all on is very lucrative that's why they do what they do the grift is lucrative they consult for this person they appear here on on interviews they get sponsors on this side bloody blah, blah 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 and it all adds up this is why they're all peddling the same shit the right wing grift is very lucrative um the tit for tat feuding has taken on another uh strange dimensions on telegram the social media network popular with far right figures last week text messages between yannapolis and fuentes leaked on telegram and twitter the message the text messages flattered yannapolis's narrative and um that he played a sort of mentor role for the young white nationalist report leader yannapolis embraced the leak which also included potentially embarrassing exchange when yannapolis advised fuentes on how to make up for his short stature alexander and fuentes did not return square request for a comment this month however the right the fight has over the ruins of west campaign turned more serious the rival sides lobbed unconfirmed accusations that their enemies had participated in various improper activities what's that Inapolis even set up a hotline asking for dirt on alexander what are they asking for like flipping gay sordid details and shit this is crazy, man. Um, I was disappointed by, and I'm now disgusted with my former protege, Yannapolis added in a lengthy statement to Daily Beast. In a lengthy statement, <laughs> Nicholas um, has shown himself to be incapable of humility, growth, gratitude, strategy, teamwork, and political judgment and basic honesty. This is like the fucking Spider-Man meme, isn't it? Yannapolis accusing Fuentes of lacking humility, growth, gratitude, strategy, teamwork, political judgment, and basic honesty. Um, amid the fighting, Alexander has portrayed himself on social media as still close to Wes's uh, presidential bid, but Camacho, the producer, doubts there's much presidential run or to speak of. Ali is all over Twitter representing Ye as if he's part of Ye's campaign, Camacho said, and it's completely bullshit. Uh, while West's own worried, while West's own operation is in chaos, those around Trumps are worried for him much. Uh, anyway, cool. You get the gist anyway. It's over for the Ye's presidential campaign. So if he was on the Ye 24 flipping hype train, I'm sorry to tell you that that is now over. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry to tell you that that is now over. There is no more. It's absolutely gone. It's finished. It's over. Arigato.